Okay, uh, welcome back to the Conch Sessions. Big ups, grinding. Big up, big ups, Conch Records. Big ups, Space FM. Um, now, first of all, uh, we've had a few of these Conch Sessions so far. Uh, previously, we spoke to House Shoes. We spoke to Max Glazer, Chronix, uh, Tall Black Guy. And it is uh, my pleasure to introduce Rodney P. Yes, sir. Welcome back to NZ. Yep, glad to be here, brother. Glad to be here, definitely. Now, um, first of all, my name is Dylan C. I'm from Base FM, Auckland, DJ, radio presenter, etc. I uh, just want to ask you, uh, first of all, introduce who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Okay, my name is Rodney P, aka the Rhythm Killer. I'm a UK hip hop soldier, and I hustle a lot to try and stay ahead. That's what I do. Nice. Right, so now, um, how long is it since you've been in the game? Um, we put out, as London Posse, we put out our first record in 1986. So I would say professionally since 1986, but I came into hip hop around 80, 82, 83. Like real young boy, you know? Like real young boy, fan of the music, fan of the vibes. And I've been here ever since, definitely. Now, who were your influences when you were first starting out? Um, in from early days influences like I really loved the Cold Crush brothers. Grandmaster Chasm, Almighty KG were huge. And then of course Run DMC. Run DMC and LL Cool J, the early Death Jam like the Death Jam label stuff, T La Rock as well. And they were all people that came to the UK early, so we were able to see them early. And yeah, once I got that bug, I mean it, it was infectious. Hip hop swept across the UK. Everyone got into it of, of, of my generation. It was a thing that just took over, absolutely. Now I remember, um, I did an interview with you, a phone interview just before Christmas, uh, talking about Splore. One of the things we spoke about was, uh, for years here in New Zealand, there was a certain kind of cultural cringe around people that wouldn't accept homegrown music because they thought it wasn't up to standard of what was coming from overseas. Sounds familiar. Yeah, so, so tell me about kind of you starting out and people being kind of slow to really kind of accept and pick up on the local hip-hop. I mean, how it started in the UK was, like, obviously, we were just copying the Americans. Well, like, we were rapping with fake American accents and doing our best American rapper impressions. It took a while for us to kind of find our own voices. And then when we did, like, for us as London Posse, when we first started rapping in UK accents, saying we need to rap in the way that we talk, that was going against the grain. So we weren't, we weren't celebrated for that. It was a big argument. Like, this, the saying was, we don't want to hear that. Like, hip hop is supposed to sound American. So it was, a, it was a big argument, it was a big issue, but we felt and knew that we were right, so we pushed forward with that. And now, like, you know, 25, 30 years later, it's, it's the norm. You couldn't, you couldn't come out in the UK and use a fake accent from anywhere and not get laughed out of the club. You know, you, you, you better represent the thing for real. And I, and I would say that, for, for other areas and other regions who, who are getting into the industry of music and putting out records and trying to be artists, it's important that you represent where you come from and the thing that's individual to you. Because that's how you really, you know, make a product and build a scene and can take it to the marketplace. You can't take a copy of something someone else is doing better than you already to the marketplace, you know, it don't make sense. So it's important we represent where we come from, no doubt. Do you think there was a moment um, in the scene where people did kind of start to really accept what was happening at home? Yeah, in the UK it was when we put out Money Mad. When London Posse released Money Mad, the ground shifted. Like that was that when people said, oh, okay, like I understand how it works and how you could use your own accent and make these records that reflect where we come from. And the UK is about hip hop and reggae music. And my foundation is reggae music, not hip hop. Hip hop, I found hip hop when I was 13, 14. But reggae music was the stuff I grew up with in my house. So once you got around to like, okay, let's start digging into our real back catalogue, we found a sound that really reflected where we came from, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I've always noticed that uh, the difference between the US and the UK is that uh, acceptance of bass culture, not just hip hop, but you know the reggae sound system culture, and then even going through uh, you know the rise of DMB and Jungle, which was very much a UK thing, MCs and producers jumping on that. I mean, the UK very much is orientated on bass. It's a, it's a bass music kind of play. I mean, it's also the melting pot, so we get everything. There's no kind of music from anywhere in the world that doesn't come through the UK. But what we love the most is the baseline music. And I guess that's partly because most of us come from Caribbean heritage or African heritage now. And 
that's what we grew with. We, we grew with bass lines from, from before we were born. We were rocking out the bass lines in mama's belly. So that's what we do, definitely. Now tell me about the switch from uh, London Posse and then stepping out on your own and doing features and then ultimately leading to your kind of debut album. Yeah, it, it was a big switch for me. I mean, I wasn't sure. Like, I didn't have the confidence to say, well, I'm going to go out as Rodney P and just do my thing. I was like, well, no one don't want to hear me on my own. It's, it's a London Posse was the attraction. And it was Dolby, whose record you just played earlier, that, that Love and Hate record. He was like, no, nah, come studio, come do this tune for me. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just try a thing. And, and that tune got a really good reaction back home. It was a, that was a big tune for me back home. And that kind of gave me the confidence to say, okay, let me do my thing. My, 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 we can work it out, definitely. And then uh, when your debut album came out, um, it, well, the material that you used and the, the kind of lyrical references, was that stuff that you'd held on to for years? Some of it was. Some of that stuff was real. Like Some of that stuff would have been on the next London Vossi album. And then, I mean, before that, there was also that EP that I put out on Pussyfoot with Dolby, the Things in Time EP, and it was like a four-track EP. And by the time we got to my album, there was stuff that I'd been sitting on for a long time, and then, and then stuff that was like, I need to get my, my new vibes out, because I didn't want to be stuck kind of just making retro music. Like, you know what I mean? Try to live on what had already gone. I need to make sure people know that I still got vibes, and I still got energy, and I still got lyrics. So. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was like a rebirth for me, definitely. So it was about 10 years ago that, uh, that your debut album dropped. Um, when can we expect to hear uh, the second follow-up album? Summertime, summertime. It's actually via mix back home now. Yeah, I've got Digo from Four Heroes, who, who was part of a crew called the PD3 back in the days, who I was just discussing earlier as well. Like He's part of Bugs in the Attic, part of um, Four Heroes, definitely doing big things and he's mixing my album as we speak so summertime I'll, I'll be back out with some new things definitely uh, so he's on the mix as far as production on the beats so who have you pulled in for that well I've got I've got Joe Buddha who's a big UK hip-hop producer um, Skits is on there I've got DJ Dive from the Represent crew from Bristol who everyone knows as a drum and bass DJ but he's actually done a scar track for me um, I've got a new guy from Birmingham called Urban Monk who makes big epic hip hop beats. So I've got some of that. I've got, I've got a variety of flavors on there. Definitely a variety of flavors, no doubt. Now you mentioned you know, that you've got the idea on a Sky Track. So, so it is still pulling in, uh, referencing all of that UK based culture music? It's Absolutely. It's not strictly hip hop. Well, album. I mean, when I do my Rodney P thing, right, it's, it's a hip hop reggae album. I make hip hop reggae, I'm a hip hop reggae artist. Within that, I mean, I do drum and bass, I do grime, I do garage, I do house, I do, I like, I go where the vibes is good. But I think, for me as an artist, important people recognise what I do. On, on, a, on, a, on a Rodney P thing, I do a hip-hop reggae thing. There's going to be some drum and bass mixes, there's going to be a grime remix, they'll be like, we'll, we'll call it other stuff, but the core of it is hip-hop and reggae. That's what it is, straight. And uh, in the meantime, you've, you've released an EP on True Thoughts, you've collaborated with people like Dub Pistols, you're, you're jumping on different You trends. fully know my thing, innit, bro? <laughs> I, 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 I keep myself informed. Well, all right, good, 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 good. I mean, for me, I do a lot of collaborations and, it, and it's, a, it's a way for me to keep it entertaining for me. Like, it, it, it'd be easy for me to go in the studio and be selfish and just make whatever I want whenever I want. And I like to do that too. But I like the energy of linking and collaborating and, you know, throwing ideas against the wall and kind of seeing what sticks. So I've always done that. That's, that's, that's part of my hustle. I, I like to go out and find people to work with. Absolutely. And do you find when you do collaborate that you come up with different ideas than if you were just in the studio on your own trying to yeah, work yeah yeah you get you get to go down different lanes and try different stuff and try different sounds and and you know a lot of other people bring different things to the table so you, you mix and match it and see what see what works yeah that's that and that's what keeps it entertaining for me i mean there's a lot of artists i've been here for 30 years doing this thing and people how oh, come you've been here for so long all of that stuff but the reality is i just do it because i like it and i make the records that i like i work with people that i like i don't really go to studios with people that we ain't mates or we don't have some kind of relationship or we ain't vibes on a level i keep it you know what i mean i keep it homegrown and thorough for me i keep it a vibes for me that's 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 the first thing so yeah man i'm, I'm still here because i still enjoy doing it that's why i'm still here now um as far as collaborations is there anyone who you've always dreamt of collaborating with which you still haven't kind of worked with yet yeah there's loads of people i mean i'm a music fan so like my 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 wish list wouldn't be just like a whole heap of rappers or hip hop producers. There's, 
I'm a music fan. I, I just like music. And I mean, luckily enough, one of the collaborations on my, on my album is I've got John Holt on my album. And I've got the last record that he made before he died. And it's also the only hip hop record that he ever made. Like he very much stayed in his lane in the UK. He was very much in demand. Drum and bass artists wanted him, hip hop artists wanted him, but he wasn't up for doing it. He's, he does his thing. But we've done a remake of Police and Helicopters, which is dedicated to um, urban, urban ganja farmers. So instead of police and helicopters flying over fields, it's about flying over inner cities with their scanners looking for the urban ganja farmers. So we've made a, a remake of that for my album, so definitely look out for that. So something like that would be a definite coup for you. Yeah, absolutely. That was a big coup for me. And, and, and the reality is he did it for me for nothing because he liked the idea and he liked the vibes. So yeah, man, rest in peace, Mr. John Holt, Sir John Holt. And it's one of those tunes, it's one of those tunes that my mama would be proud of because my mum is a huge John Holt fan. So for me to be able to go home and say, Mum, I just made a treat with John Holt. Yeah, that, was, that got me a little brownie points that day, definitely. <laughs> it's funny, I remember having this uh, conversation here with Tall Black Guy and right. one of the things he came up with was he wants to make music that his mum can appreciate yeah, as well. So. And my kids too. Like, I'm a lot older now. Like, I've made some really like debaucherous, like, rowdy music. Like, and I stand behind it because I've lived a debaucherous, rowdy life. But I'm a dad now, like, and I want to play some tunes to my daughters too, you know? So, yeah, that definitely plays a part. Nice. Now, uh, ultimately, is, with your music, is there a message that you want to get across? A particular message that... There is no particular message. It's not a particular message. It's just, like, let's just try and be honest out here and not fill our kids up with too much fuckery and bullshit. Let's just, like, try and be quite straight. You know what I mean? I try to be quite straight, so, like... I mean, if you listen to my record and my catalog of music, there's some real debaucherous, drug-infused, liquor-infused, shaking your ass, chasing women type music. Because we did that, that's how we grew up. But there's also some really socially conscious, like, you know, let's, let's think about how we live as individuals and as communities. It's also important that we reflect that too. So uh, I'd like to think my music is a balance. Like, uh, I've got a lyric that says, when I rhyme, it's a mixture, debauchery and scripture. My hustle is a big man hustle, so call me Mr. Dutty Rhythm Killer. Come and sip on my elixir. Could paint a pretty picture, but that would be a myth. So, yeah, like, that's my thing, bruv. I'm about, like, it's, it's finding that balance between what's real. My, my real life is not always pretty pictures and, like, being Mr. Righteous. But we try, you know what I mean? We try. All good. Okay, uh, Rodney P, Conscious Sessions. Um, we're going to do big ups, uh, shout outs to Sam Dutch from Grinding. No doubt, big up my homie Sam every time. Uh, shout outs to Bass FM. Absolutely. It's all about, you know what it is, and I was saying to you, me and you were speaking earlier, it's so important that we have these outlets that are not like, again, like, I'll say there's nothing wrong with commercial music, but we need these outlets that really feed our souls musically and i know that's what bass fm is out here trying to do so go on and big up the bass fm family definitely keep it moving with the vibes and the energy that we love you know what i mean no doubt and also uh shout outs to conch for having us again yes sir big up and if you don't know get to know them man i got them the mojitos with the white rum with ray and nephews in it good stuff and 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 and, and the sweet corn rolled in the, in the parmesan with the mayo oh my days <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, man, if you're into food, come check the man them down the crunch because they did good stuff. Try and know. Uh, also, uh, I'll just get you a look at the camera and just do a shout out from Rodney P. Yo, this is Rodney P, the rhythm killer. Big things we're in it as we represent for the Auckland family. Big up all the New Zealand crew. You know how we do. Anything I told test was slew as we keep it moving and we work with vibes. Yeah, big up the crunch family inside. All right, I'm off in rhythm killer for the people. Hey, thank you very much. Well, all right. Thanks for the invitation, no doubt.